Hi, and welcome again to Calvary Temple Live. As you can see, once more, I'm not behind the pulpit at church. I am in my living room, but I want to welcome you to join me in a good word from God's word today. We're looking specifically at 2 Samuel chapter 23. If you'd like to take your Bible and join me, that's where we'll be. This is God's time. I understand that our nation and the world is struggling with coronavirus and we're looking for help from our medical community. We're taking directives from our government officials and every one of us are doing our part. But we believe that God has something good to do to us and through us and in his kingdom. God has a good word if people will listen. Three points I'd like to make to you today from the life of David. God has been good to David. And we can say, God has been good to me. Second, God has been good through David, and God has done good through me. And third, God is building his kingdom through all of us. So to our story now, the 23rd chapter from 2 Samuel begins like this. Now these are the last words of David, which lets us know that at the end of his life, he wrote this. It was a life filled with struggles, just like all of us. It was a life in which David done some wonderful things and had some painful failures. But he now talks about, looking back on his life, the things that God had accomplished. David, the son of Jesse, declares, and the man who is raised on high declares, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over men righteously, who rules in the fear of God, is as the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds, when the tender grass springs out of the earth through sunshine after rain. Truly, is not my house so with God? For he has made an everlasting covenant with me ordered in all things and secured for all my salvation and all my desire. Will he not indeed make it grow? But the worthless, every one of them, we thrust away like the thorns because they cannot be taken in the hand. The man who touches them must be armed with iron, the shaft of a spear, and they will be completely burned with fire in their place. These are the names of the mighty men which David had. And when you read down the list, you'll see that there are 37 of them mentioned. He begins this lesson for us with these words. These are the last words of David. One day words will be written or spoken about us at what will be our funeral. Those words are called a eulogy. In the eulogy, it's normally written about the character, the accomplishments, how much a loved one meant to family and friends. David writes his own eulogy here, but it's not a story about what David has done. It's really a story of about what God has done through David. He says, the man who is raised on high declares. Who raised David on high? The Lord did. At the end of his life, David acknowledges what every person ought to acknowledge. If there was any good to my life, if there was any accomplishments that are to be lauded or recognized, it's only because the Lord has done good to me. So this brings me to the points I'd like to make. First, God has been good to me. God was good to David, and God's been good to me. And I trust if you look at your life, you'll find that God's been good to you also. So what did the Lord do for David? Well, the Lord raised him up from his humble beginnings to the highest office in the kingdom of Israel. David began life as a shepherd. He was the youngest of his brothers and treated as the little guy that no one thought could ever accomplish anything. But the Lord saw something in David that no one else did, something that they weren't looking for. God found a man with a heart after himself. People are impressed by looks, by riches, by abilities, by fame, by money. But that's not what God is impressed at. He looks at the heart. God could give David all those things, and God did bless David with many of them. But what God did see, 
in David is called character. Eventually, David would become something that the world would consider famous, the king of Israel. And that does make one well known. But in God's eyes, being the king of Israel had everything to do with being a servant of God and a servant to the people. Leadership is found in service. The heart of a worshiper was found also in David. God raised David on high. God anointed David. God spoke through David. The Holy Spirit anointed David's pen to write nearly half of the book of Psalms. God had made an everlasting covenant with David. It was ordered and secure, David says. God was his savior, his helper, his guide, his strength, his provider, his defender. And though I'm not King David, I'm not a psalmist, I don't fill the same place in God's kingdom as David did, and yet every one of us can say those same words that David said. God is my savior, my helper, my guide, my strength, my provider, my defender. The Lord is all of that and so much more to each of us. He is good to us. He has been good to me and God's been good to you. Secondly, God was good not just to David, but God was good through David. In a time when the world needs to see people with kindness and generosity and a servant's heart, God is looking to be good through us as his church, especially now when the world has no answer to what's going on around. God's intention in being good to David was not an end in itself. God's intention was to be good through David. When the Lord spoke to Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, this is what he says. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to a land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. That is the good he will do to him. And I will bless you, and I will make you and your name great, and you shall be a blessing. The Lord begins by being good to us and continues by being good through us. My life does not begin and end just with me. Whenever we make our lives about nothing more than getting what we want, living only for ourselves, inevitably, it ends up hurting someone else and eventually serves to our own ruin. No man is an island, wrote the English poet John Donne. The Apostle Paul wrote a great biblical principle about not just his life, but the life of all God's people. Romans chapter 14, verses 7 to 9. For not one of us lives for himself, and not one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. God is good to us, God is good through us, and lastly, God is building his kingdom through all of us. The last words of the chapter are these from 2 Samuel 23, verse 39. The last few words say 37 in all. 37 people, not one is in David alone, not three is in the mighty captains of the Israelites, not 30 who were the mighty warriors themselves, but all of them together. This is when I becomes we, when we becomes us, that the closing words of the chapter becomes the story of the great activity of God through all of his people. Lynn and I have been in churches where there has unfortunately been just a me or an I or a you or others but at that time, no we. Division is one of the saddest things to see in a place where unity of heart and spirit should be one of the great hallmarks of the church. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus said, any kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. What is true of kingdoms and cities and houses is true churches, marriages, family, and our nation. 
One of the great founding documents of our country, the Constitution of the United States, begins with these words. We, the people, as I hear this stories that continue to pour out through the media about candidates for public office and those that surround them, I worry for our country. I worry for our children and your children and your grandchildren. Psalm 33, verse 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Proverbs 14, verse 34, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. David's last words, 37 people, all working together, God working through them. Israel defeating all the enemies that face them. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, a long line of leaders whom God was good to and God was good through and God built his kingdom through. Hebrews chapter 11 is the story of God's people. What more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon and Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, not accepting their release, so they might obtain a better resurrection. And others experienced mockings and scourgings, yes, chains, imprisonment. They were stoned, sawn in two, tempted, put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, men of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and caves, holes in the ground, all these having gained approval by their faith, did not receive what was promised because God was waiting to provide something better for all of us. Therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so in easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that's set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author, the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. In Luke chapter 12, verse 32, Jesus said, Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In closing, let's be reminded, God has been good to us, God has been good through us, and God builds his kingdom through all of us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the story of David a young man that you saw in his heart had the character qualities necessary for you to find in order to be in, build your kingdom through. God, when you search our hearts also, may you find that character, character that recognizes you have been good to us, the heart that is humble and allows you to be good through us, and the unity that reminds us all God is building his kingdom through us. In this time, let the world see that the church is a living representation of Jesus Christ. I ask in his name. God bless you.